Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbook process video with you. Today's layout that I am sharing was actually created for the Hip Kit Club weekly challenge and you can see the mood board in the corner there. So you can see it's got lots of sort of rich colours, there's some purple, there's some pink, there's some green and I thought it would match perfectly with the January kit that I had already been working from. Now for this layout, I decided to work with my scraps. I've done a number of videos lately where I've been utilizing my scraps and you can see all of the scraps that I've got there that are currently left from my kit. I also have a few full sheets of paper, but I wanted to keep those intact for now. So I'm gonna be working with the scraps from my kit and I'm also gonna be working with the tissue paper that my kit came wrapped in. So for this layout, I actually decided to create a collage background. Now, I haven't done any collaging for a while, so I thought this would be nice and fun to get my hands dirty and make use of all of those little bits of paper. So I started with some um, gel matte medium there, and I have torn up the tissue paper into just random sort of strips and I've got a sheet of 350 GSM white smooth cardstock and I'm just scrunching those little bits of tissue paper up and adding them. I don't want them perfectly flat because I want there to be a bit of texture in this background and I'm just using like a foam brush there, adding the gel matte medium onto the page and then just sticking the strips onto the paper randomly to create a bit of an abstract collage background. Now, if this looks a little bit different, you'll have to forgive me because I wasn't at home when I created this video. I actually was lucky enough to enjoy uh, a night at my sister's house and a day with her scrapping because she is a scrapper as well. So I was set up on the desk at her place and did my very best to get my filming rig set up and the best lighting I could so that I could actually film uh, this video and a couple of others that I did while I was there so I could share them with you. So you can see I am just working with those little bits of paper. I am just ripping them and placing them just to cover the background basically. Now my goal was to leave a bit of white space around the edge because I really wanted the focal area just concentrated in the center of the page. Now, part of the reason for that was the fact that I am actually working with a square photo. So it's a photo, a black and white photo of my daughter that I took recently. And she's a bit of an arty soul like me. So I thought this photo of her would actually pair quite well with this collaged background. Now, I have to admit, I was also inspired on the mood board, not only by the colours, I was inspired to create a collage. There's an image of a whole series of umbrellas on the on the mood board and it actually looked to me and it made me think of layered pieces of random little paper which was what sort of led me to creating this collage background. Now on the mood board there are also some images of paint and other various mediums so I did want to add a bit of extra mixed media to this. So now I'm going to go in with a stamp. I'm going in with that sort of crisscross sort of mesh texture stamp which is from Darkroom Door which is a fantastic Australian company and I'm just using some black stays on ink and I'm just stamping in several areas over the top of the collage and it just helps give that collage background a bit more depth and a bit more interest. So once I had the stamping down I decided that I also wanted to add some paint because there was an image of a paintbrush on that mood board. Now I didn't take all of my paint supplies with me. I had very limited paint supplies so I just decided to use that same foam brush that I had used for the matte medium and I actually used it to apply some white acrylic paint through a stencil that I had on my Raskog there. I think that was a Flutter by Designs one. Anyway, you can see it has been very well loved, that stencil. And I just added a little bit of stenciling over the top because that just gave me that third layer and it was just building that beautiful mixed media background. So as you can see, mixed media doesn't always necessarily have to be super messy. It doesn't necessarily have to contain a lot of wet liquid mediums that you can't control. I actually had very good control over the placement of every medium that I used on this page. 
So I'm getting to the stage now where I'm going to start working on the foreground layers, but I didn't really want anything jumping like too far forward in this page. I wanted everything to work very well as a sort of really eclectic collaged background. I wanted to add in a pop of colour, so that's why I chose that bright yellow doily, just to help that photo of my daughter. Even though it's quite bold, I just wanted to help separate it from the background and help it pop from the page. So putting that little bit of bright yellow behind it just helped lift it up from all of those background layers and bring it to the viewer's eye. Now you can see I've also got some scrap cardboard on the back of my photo. I do this with all of my photos and I would recommend that you add something underneath your photos like that. You might not use cardboard, you might like to use like crafters foam or foam tape or something like that. Anything that will provide that extra layer of separation between your photos and all of the things that you've got behind it will help your photo pop from the page, regardless of what sort of background you're doing. It doesn't have to be mixed media. So to embellish this page, I've actually got the uh, die cut ephemera pack there, which is from that same hip kit. It was the January 2022 hip kit and it was chock full of the Kaleidoscope collection, which is a hip kit club exclusive collection. And I have to say, I'm still not sick of this kit. I absolutely love it. So I'm just looking for a few uh, die cut pieces there that I can add in. You can see that on top of those collage layers, I didn't actually talk about it when I did it. But you can see that I have added a number of straight pieces on the right there just to get a bit of a horizontal plane going. It helps the viewer's eye follow those lines in to where the focal point of the layout is, which of course is the photo. And it just helps balance out the, the abstractedness of that background. So I added in the title piece, Dreamer which you can see also had horizontal stripes on it. That also helps to anchor the entire design and help provide a bit of stability from that whole organic mess that is the background. Um, above the photo there, I've added in that little die cut piece that said, yes, you can. And the reason I chose that was because of the phrase that was in the center of the mood board. I've also added in that, tucked in that little red flower above the title because there was a flower on the mood board. So I wanted to put in a little nod to the florals on the mood board. And I've got a little black and white flower that I'm actually adding to the corner of the photo as well. Now, there wasn't quite enough fun and texture going on on this background already, right? So I decided to use some of my absolutely favorite washi tape, which got this beautiful... Um, sort of ombre pattern on it that goes from pink to purple to aqua and then it's got some silver foiled crosses on it and when you tear it up and just add it to a background like this it looks sensational. Now I am adding in a little bit of oh I'm adding in a little bit of pom-pom trim here. Um, I have noticed who's been using it. Julie Taylor uses a lot of pom-pom trim on her layouts and I thought the other day oh my god it looks so sweet and I haven't used it in such a long time that I actually pulled a piece out and it was sitting in my little add-on kit that I had curated for myself to use with this scrapbook kit and I thought a few little bits of pom-pom trim just to add some extra texture to this page would work beautifully. So there's three little snippets of pom-pom trim on there. Now I'm digging through that extra little box that's got a few bits and pieces in it. I've got these little butterflies that are made from like sequin material. Uh, I decided to add a few of those on because I thought they'd work well. I've got that little uh, resin heart slash rainbow piece there that I was going to put on in the end I didn't put that on I switched it out for another resin piece that actually says I love you now I have no idea where these resin pieces came from they have been in my stash for a very long time they could have been some random like eBay purchase or something uh, but I found they've worked really well with this January kit so I'm going through, oh, you can see I'm fiddling around. There's another little resin. I've got this little resin like mushroom, which I thought would work well on there, but he just like stuck out too much. So that's why I ended up going to the little phrase that I used in the end. 
So there wasn't a great deal more that I was doing on this page. You can watch me fiddle and fluff around as much as you like. Um, as I said, it was just a matter of layering those embellishments up that would just work well. I was looking for areas of colour where I could place things. Sometimes I wanted to place them where they would actually contrast to the colours underneath. Sometimes I was placing them so that they were like tone on tone. You can see I've added a little chipboard heart from the chipboard sticker sheet in the corner of the photo there on top of that black and white uh, flower. And I don't know that I do add a great deal. I sort of dug through the ephemera pack some more. I probably should have cut that out because I don't think I added anything else. Now, to finish off this page, I wanted to pull in a little bit more darkness. So I added some black splatters just using black ink and a small nylon paintbrush. So I'm going to put the mood board back up here again in a second so that you can see again how I did and those elements that did inspire me from the mood board and the fact that the general collage of images inspired me to create this collage background. So you can see there I've incorporated paint, I've incorporated a flower, I've worked with the colours and as I said that image of the umbrellas reminded me of lots of little scraps of paper like collage together like this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button as well and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.